My name is Josh Nims. I'm a skateboarder. Um, I went to Temple Law School uh, back uh, almost 15 years ago. My story starts with uh, one of these trees. Um, if you have ever been out on the sidewalk in Philadelphia, and for me, uh, deep in the deep south, you see a tree and the sidewalk has been paved over it, the asphalt has run up next to it, and the tree keeps growing. And some people would say that that tree has a problem that it's got to solve. And uh, if you're a skateboarder, you tend to look at it and say, man, that tree made something awesome. <laughs> so when I was about 11 years old, I was growing up in the Deep South. Uh, I'm from Lancaster, South Carolina. And um, one day, out skateboarding with some friends, we, we noticed these things, these incredible formations. And I thought, man, that's just the right scale. It's not a humongous ramp. It's not something too small, it's just right. Isn't it amazing how nature and the urban environment have come together in this almost symbolic way? And, uh, and skateboarding has erupted out of it. So as you can see, these things happen. You can be out on a camping trip, find a, if you're out in a parking lot, you see something to skate and you go after it. But I'm not kidding you, I stuck with this idea for years and years. I always thought that one day, I would build a skate spot in nature and around nature. And uh, I didn't know how it was going to happen, um, but I knew it was going to happen. And so I ended up in Philadelphia, this beautiful city that I love. I've been here since 1997. And um, here we have the Benjamin Franklin Parkway. And for many of you, you can see this familiar image of an aerial view of Love Park down from City Hall. Love Park is like uh, many other awful urban plazas in the United States. <laughs> it's, um, it, it, they had the best intentions, folks. They really did. But architects in the 60s, they had this feeling like we're going to use massive materials. They're going to be hard and cold, and it's going to be these centerpieces for our cities. And, and don't, nobody's going to sit there. Don't worry about it. That's what they thought. But as it turns out, our cities got just as active as planners hoped they would, but never really planned for. And so by the 1990s and early 2000s, when I, came to, when I came to Philadelphia and started to experience Philadelphia for all it was, especially its skateboarding culture, um, this was the state that I pretty much found Love Park in. A lot of trash, some homelessness, some guys hanging around playing chess. There's nothing wrong with that, except for the rats. So, what was happening in this space? What was happening in urban spaces all over the United States when we had a uh, modernist plaza in the middle of a city that was otherwise barren? Well, skateboarding, come on. That's what was happening. This is a young man named Aishad Ware. Uh, I will let you know that Aishad is in about the third or fourth uh, highest ranked skateboarder in, in the world right now. He's a Philadelphian, thank you. And he, along with thousands, not just hundreds, but thousands of other skateboarders, cut their teeth at Love Park. Those ledges and those gaps and that, sen that sense of being in the center of the urban environment resonated with them. It resonated with them as young people and as skateboarders. And so they've come since the, since the 1980s. And Love Park is known all over the world for its skateboarding culture. But unfortunately, the city of Philadelphia in the early 2000s was, taken, was in the wrong direction. Instead of recognizing this as a, as a sign of growth, as a sign of our creative class embracing our city and wanting to be here, they said, you're messing up lunch. You're, this, this is just the same as the rat problem and the homeless problem and the trash problem. It needs to be solved. And so, Skateboarding was prohibited at all times in JFK Plaza, fine up to $300, and forfeiture of your skateboard. <laughs> now, I was a law student at Temple University uh, when, this, when these signs uh, were erected, and a friend of mine came to me and he said, Josh, one, I think he knew I wasn't doing all that great in law school, <laughs> and he said, uh, you ought to go to these hearings, and do something about this. And I said, okay. And I knew that Love Park was special. Nobody makes anything this black and white and artsy about anything that's not awesome. 
right? And this picture is good. And it's the same thing. Look at, look at that, that little piece of granite sticking up there with a piece of metal under it to launch Josh Kalis, one of the greatest skateboarders from Philadelphia ever, up and over that trash can. These guys are looking on. Life is good. It's a beautiful day. They're social. They're in, the, they're in a place doing positive things in the middle of their city. What more do you want? And so as the movement against skateboarding was happening, there was a movement for skateboarding at Love Park that was also happening. And a lot of people started to get together and get organized around this idea that skateboarding should be legal at Love Park. But even if it wasn't going to be, what were we going to do about skateboarding in Philadelphia? And there was a lot of people who were coming together and saying, you know, skateboarding, is a, it is. It's part of what makes our city attractive to young people. And, you know, we want people to stay in our colleges and universities, come here, and then stay when they, when they graduate. So they're part of our tax base and our city continues to grow. Well, you have to give them things to do, places to be, places they want to be. And that's what skateboarding at Love Park symbolized for so many people in Philadelphia. In fact, it even felt that way to Ed Bacon. And does everybody know who Ed Bacon is? Now, if you don't, Ed was our city planner from 1949 to 1970. A lot of things that we love about Philadelphia, Ed was behind. A lot of things that we hate about Philadelphia, Ed was behind. A lot of things that we love about the world, like Kevin Bacon, <laughs> came from Ed Bacon. But Ed was also the, the, the author of the Love Park scheme. And he was part of a very early generation of architects and planners who were trying to figure out what open space meant in the middle of our cities. And so Love Park wasn't his design in 1965. Love Park was his thesis at Cornell in 1936. And that's something to think about. That's how far ahead. So when we think about, oh, Ed almost you know, put an interstate over, over South Street, or you know, we don't really like the gallery on the, in, at Market East. Well, that's, I, I hear you. But, <laughs> but what he did do was have a vision for what types of public spaces the, the future were going to hold. And so he believed that Love Park, that skateboarding belonged at Love Park and became one of our early advocates and actually came out and got on a skateboard and uh, pushed about two steps and said, that was the most thrilling thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> and then he got off. So with a little help from our friends, we started Franklin's Payne Skate Park Fund. And Franklin's Payne... Franklin's Payne Skate Park Fund uh, was the genesis of a lot of young people, a lot of adults, a lot of skateboarders, a lot of non-skateboarders. It, it became a coalition of believers in Philadelphia with this special kick, and that was that skateboarding was that relationship to our belief. That skateboarding showed, again, that potential for our city to be a nexus for the creative class in the 21st century. And so we started thinking about what kind of public spaces what public space for skateboarding really meant. We wanted to start advocating for a public space for skateboarding in Center City because it seemed like Love Park was kind of a lost cause, but it still has this great symbolic value. And so we had to become that tree. First, we built Pop Skate Park in Fishtown. Uh, this was in 2009 that we completed this, and it's been a huge success. Um, a zillion kids from eight to about, what's 14 minus nine, from about 8 to 14, have uh, started their skateboarding careers at, at Pops Playground. Everything's about this high. And what we found out as we started building skate parks was nothing needs to be bigger than this. If you want to get rid of the liability issues and all the things that cities worry about, make it this tall. <laughs> because I'm an old skateboarder, and you know what? I didn't care. I love skateboarding, and that size just makes it easier for me to have a good time. <laughs> Whitehall Skate Park happened next up in the Northeast. Uh, in 2010. McCreesh Playground, which is actually an ongoing project for us right now, uh, was developed in 2012. Uh, that's in deep in southwest Philadelphia where a lot of folks are underserved recreationally, but especially the skateboarders. And then finally, Grace Ferry Skate Park that we just finished in this last year uh, on the Grace Ferry Trail segment of Schuylkill Banks. And uh, full disclosure, I, I also work for Schuylkill River Development Corporation, and so I'm busy building things, 
Um, and I got a chance to, to make things come together here and build uh, two things in the same place. And one was her skateboarding. <laughs> <laughs> My boss is just figuring this out. <laughs> but the real hero of this story is supposed to be true public space for skateboarding. And what that entails, of course, is true public space, right? Skateboarding is just, a, is just a metaphor for all the things that we're trying to free up in Philadelphia to be the most creative and transformative place we can be. So we weren't there yet. Back in 1927, you can see that uh, the city was of black and white, of course, because you know, that's how it was in 27. Uh, but it was a gritty place. There were a lot of bridges. There was a lot of industry. But way up here in that little circled area, was a little site up next to our brand new art museum uh, that was going to hold some, some promise for the future. It was actually connected to right where George Ellett's famous uh, suspension bridge was. Another Philadelphia first, George Ellett's suspension bridge was built in 1844. It was the first suspension bridge in the United States that would hold train traffic, in this case a trolley being pulled by a horse. Uh, later, a trolley being, put, being powered uh, from a powerhouse that was on our site. And there's that powerhouse in 1923, tucked away behind the waterworks. And you can see our wonderful parkway, another behemoth of architectural and planning transformation that Philadelphia uh, had within it. And so it all seems like it might be the right spot for something else transformative to happen. And so by the mid-2000s, here it's just me and my executive director at the time, Claire Laver, but actually a, a cast of thousands had supported us to get to the point where this broad, wide open site, right in the middle of Philadelphia, probably the best piece of real estate in Philadelphia, through all this work, had, sort of, had suddenly fallen into our lap. And this was the spot where the mayor's office said, okay, Josh, you guys can build your skate park here. Raise $4.5 million, and you can build your skate park here. <laughs> I don't know if, anybody's ever, if any of you have ever raised $4.5 million. I found that it takes a while. <laughs> but with a great, great help from a great number of supporters, including city officials, parents of skateboarders, people who didn't know anything about skateboarding until I told them one day that skateboarding was related to, to maintaining our creative class in our city. Um, all kinds of politicians, former governor, uh, senators, you name it, people started to buy into this idea. And so by 2006, way back while we were still working on these other small projects, we were trying to keep pushing this thing through, percolating it, if you will. And we had ended up with a plan that looked like this. You may see that this is a familiar look from an aerial standpoint. It looks a lot like Love Park, doesn't it? Now, I'm not saying that we could have just left love like it was and everybody could have skated there because I'm glad to have created a new nexus of public space. But nonetheless, the idea worked and we were gonna stick with it. And you can see, we'll go back and forth once. There we go, there we go. There's some things about this that just work, that radial design, that connection in each direction out so that you have, a, just have this multimodal connection between important points that people wanna get and move. It's a public space. It just happens to be for skateboarding. It, again, is our tree. While we were in the midst of getting this all finalized, we finally raised an, uh, most of our money. They started to rebuild Dilworth Plaza. And um, Love Park had had some changes happen as well. And so the city had, was willing to donate to us a lot of the granite that was very popular skate spots previously um, so that we could add those into the design. And we did so. Um, this just added to the authenticity and I think to the story of how we had evolved in terms of our relationships with the city officials and uh, with the folks involved in the planning and construction process within the city. Everybody wanted to play along now and, and, make, and finish. So in October of 2012, we broke ground the way we're supposed to, right? I mean, who needs shovels? Come on. And uh, we had our senators, we had our state representatives, we had our wonderful board of directors, uh, folks from the mayor's office, and we got into the ground. Uh, we started digging, and you'll see out in the distance a familiar site, a large oak tree. We kept working into the spring, 
Again, you can see some large oak trees in the distance. I'm foreshadowing. You know. uh, again, we're looking back. Now you can see that view of the art museum that you, were, that you were just shown a little taste of back in the black and white world in 1927. And again, we're so close now. We're so in the middle of everything. We're connecting the Schuylkill River Trail, one million people a year. We're connecting the Benjamin Franklin Parkway, two million people a year. And we're connecting Kelly Drive, 100,000 cars a year. Uh, excuse me, a week, I believe. <laughs> Jeez, 100,000 cars a year wouldn't be that many. But 100,000 cars a week is something. <laughs> we're at this nexus point where we're connecting everything. And what are, what are we connecting it with? We're connecting it with skateboarding. It's what, we're supposed, what we were supposed to do. And so finally, we're done. And just like we thought, we, we had the sneaky suspicion that if we built it, they would come. <laughs> and so the day we opened it, you can see we've got hundreds of people out there. I was out there last weekend. There were hundreds of people out there. And the beautiful thing about this space is not that it's there and there's kids skateboarding, because that's great, but that's not worth spending four and a half million dollars in 15 years of my life, <laughs> right? We, we've got to, something else has got to come out of this. And what came out of it was exactly what we hoped for. Young people, older people, baby carriages, wheelchairs, bicycles, skateboards, rollerblades, everything that moves and moves itself through our city and through our spaces and wants to connect to our riverfront and wants to connect to our art museum and our beautiful parkway, they all want to hang out here and take a break, just like we thought they would. This is what Philadelphia is supposed to do, right? This is, what, this is what we do in this city. We create community, we transform our spaces in new and different ways every 50 or 100 years, we keep building on this wonderful idea that William Penn had and the wonderful nerdiness of, of Benjamin Franklin. My boy, Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> Don't forget Thomas Paine, though, when, you, when you're doing that. We've built, we keep building on this legacy, and it's so magical that skateboarding somehow came out of that legacy in the 21st century. And then the way that it, cre it connects back to this wonderful creative group of people that I'm the last speaker from a group of. It's been a great day. It's been a great day. So this is my tree. Um, it, it's, it's Franklin Payne's tree. It's Philadelphia's tree. But at some, at some moment, it's my tree. Um, it's the tree that I started with when I was 11 years old. Um, it's got a skate park built around it because the skate park this time is so big that it can't just abut up and be our original tree at the beginning. Thank you.